Hi, I'm Deb Antonick, and what I wanted to talk to you about today very quickly is is I'm starting to do a lot of videos now where I am going to show you how I like to paint stamps um, and the brushes that I use. So you're going to see a lot of little videos coming. They'll be fast and stuff, but I thought I would go over this quickly on what I do. So the idea of what I like to do is I paint all my stamps with the uh, DecoArt Media Fluid Acrylics which I just love. They're transparent. They're high in pigment. They, you know, paint on really nicely. So the way I prep my pieces is I always start with a coat of uh, Decorat Media Gesso. Just one coat goes on quite nicely and it seals the surface, be it wood, paper, or chipboard. I like to do a lot on chipboard. And then what I do is I stamp my image then with either the um, Ranger Archival ink or the stays on jet black and what these are is they are fast drying solvent ink and as it says on the Ranger one is it's waterproof inks. I like to use the DecoArt matte medium. So once I've stamped my image you'll see me use a coat of DecoArt matte medium and what this, this matte medium will do is it creates a barrier so it will seal the stamp, seals the background, creates a barrier so it also makes this, the paint go on nice and smooth Plus, if you want to make, if you make a mistake or whatever, you can just wipe it off with a baby wipe and continue to paint. And I'll often do this two or three times during the painting process, especially if I want to build up a lot of colors. So these are all the tools that you need when you see me painting. But the biggest tool, of course, is the brushes that I use. And these are the um, Dynasty Brush IPC Ink pen and chalk brushes but they are absolutely amazing for painting with the uh, fluid acrylics and what I do like these four brushes here is all you need it's all you need to paint any of these projects I use a little um, of course you know I'm a painter by by you know my passion is painting so what I'll do is I always have a half inch angle shader or a 3 8 angle shader and that's how I float my color to add depth to my pieces so you want to have a, a nice little one. I like the Eye of the Tiger by Dynasty. These are affordable. They're almost like a student grade brush but they will they wash up like crazy. They 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 hold just the right amount of water. They they react very well with the fluid acrylics. So I use I always have a little angle shader and I like to have a flat brush. So this is just a this is a number 12 flat. Any size flat, number 12 or bigger, you know, that's for all your base coating and stuff like that. So you want to have one of those. And these are all you need when we do the painting process. This is the uh, small point IPC blender. And if you see, it's got, it basically comes to a point. And I'll show you when I'm going to show you how I'm going to load this and paint with it. And what I'll do is I treat it like it's a pen. Um, like a marker pen or a crayon or whatever. I don't paint with it the way that we would normally paint and that's what this video, this quick little video is going to show you. And then I always have, um, I need a mop just, just to sort of soften it to help, you know, if there's a little bit too much water, you know, it, it, the, it'll soften the paint and just sort of smooth it out, take a little bit of water off of your surface if need be, blends the paints. So these four brushes is all you're going to need. So I'm going to show you quickly how I load the brush and how I paint with it and see what you think. So of course you always have to have, and I like mine, you need to have a, a piece of paper towel. And I use palette paper, but you know, you, you can use like a styrofoam plate or whatever it is that you're comfortable using. And of course my water bin, my trusty water bin with clean water. So what I'll do is and this is my little water bin and it's a little bit on the wet side, on the dirty side, so I'm going to show you the clean side right now. And I'm going to move my palette over right here. Let's get everything on the screen here. So this is how I load the brush. So I always have my paper towel handy. This one's well used. I like it. I wet my brush. Just going to put it in the water, get it good and wet. And then what I'm going to do on the paper towel is I'm just going to roll it slightly to a point just takes off all the excess water. You can see I've left a little bit of water here. The brush is still damp, but it's still, I've rolled it back to a point. So it does have moisture in it, which is what we need. And then I'm gonna take, get my little 
pieces out here and I've got a couple of little samples here already pre-stamped. One's on a little old mini canvas board and this is actually a wooden um, teacup ornament. I thought it would be pretty with a little flower on it. And then I'm going to take um, some paint. So I think we will do a pretty yellow flower. Actually, yeah, we're going to do a little yellow flower. So this is um, Decorts Media Fluid Acrylics, and this is just a primary yellow, just a standard yellow. And what I do on my palette right here is I'm just going to put a little drop. You don't need a lot of this paint at all. And because my brush is already low, already dampened, I'm just going to put the tip right in here. And I'm going to actually bring this a little bit closer. Make sure I keep everything on screen. So I have just a little bit of paint on the tip. Then I'm going to come back down onto my palette and I'm just going to, almost like rouging, I'm just going to roll the brush and keep loading it with this paint and it's going to stay in this point. You can't really see the paint on it. It shouldn't have a drop of paint left on the end. It should basically look like the brush was clean, but it actually does have paint in it. And then I'm going to take my, my piece and I'm just going to hold it like it's a crayon. You know, uh, you know, if you're using markers, whatever, colored pencils, whatever. And, uh, and take yourself back to your childhood, back to being when you were a kid. And I'm just going to paint. And I'm just coloring like it was a crayon. And this paint goes a long way. Like it just, I'm just going to put a little tint of color on here. Just like so. And I can go back into this little mixture of paint right here. I can go right back into this because it's already there. We don't need to reload the brush. And just, you know, it's like, it's like a little crayon. And then I'll clean my brush off. So there's basically your first coat. And why not add a little flower center with, while we're at it, we'll use, you know, a darker shade. I always work from my colors from the darkest to, or from the lightest shade and I build them up with layers into the, the, the darker colors. So a little bit of this, this and that was, what was that? Diary eyed, di, I don't even know how to say that. Diary eyed, diary, you know, dairy light yellow. And then I'm going to load it the same way. I've cleaned my brush. And if you feel that it might be a little bit wet, if this is a little puddly, just roll it on, on the paper towel again as well. See, I'm just going to roll it on here because it's a little bit wet load my brush up a little bit wet so you can always go back once or twice and then I'm going to do my little flower center same thing just going to add a little bit of color clean my brush out and then let's add a little bit of green for the leaves so this is a uh, yellow green light Decorate media acrylics little snarby things and again just a little drop on your palette bigger than I wanted and the same thing just go into your palette just a little tip and I've loaded I've always wet the brush and clean it off on my paper towel as well and this has like a little drop of water on it. I don't want that so I can just tap take off any excess water if I feel there's need and just take it off on the paper towel Load my brush and go back in and just you know when you got smaller areas this little point is always there as long as you roll it back to a point, it stays in a point. And I'm just going to take the brush up on the tip. Oops, sorry about that. Take it up on the tip and just tap in the color there. And I think that's part of the stem. And then why not? Let's just add a little color into these guys. Just pretend it's a marker. Work right out those little hairs on the tip. And there, that's how I paint. You can add a coat of matte medium at this point. You can always add as many layers of matte medium if you're afraid of making a mess because then you can just wipe it off. But I'm going to now go into and show you how I add a layer of color. I'm not going to finish this piece, but I'm just showing you these basic brushes. And this is my, my 3 8 angle shader, which I like. It's well used. It's well loved. Actually, I actually have a better one. These things will last. They're great. So I'm going to wet it as well. And the trick with this one, let's get it back over here is when I load, when I wet it, wet it same as before. Oh darn, that's not on there. You want to pat it on paper towel on both sides. So I've wet it and blot, blot. And that will take the bulk of the moisture off. I've kept that chisel point, the flat edge, okay? And then, when I load it, I'm gonna go into this darker yellow because I'm working from uh, light to darker. 
going to corner load this brush in there just a little bit on the tip and then I'm going to blend it. So I just keep my brush flat. Notice the bristles are kept flat on the, the palette paper and I'm just going back and forth. And what this is doing is this is working the paint into the brush. Okay, so now your brush is loaded. There's no big dollop of paint on there. Then we go back into this guy and we can add our shading. And just use it on, use the whole brush flat, but the, the color is always towards the edge that you want the darkest. So the point is always there. You see how that's making these colors pop? And you can just go back in and just, this is wet enough because I don't need want a lot of water, and just reload that, take a little bit more paint, and then go back into here and do my shading. You see how that's already making the color pop? Just like so. And the same with the center is I'll go to a darker color. So I'm going to go to uh, cadmium orange hue and do exactly the same thing. Little dot of paint. And I'm going to clean my brush with water. And I'm going to come back with my brush and I'm going to take the moisture out, blot, blot. And it's always nice to keep a nice folded piece of paper towel as opposed to, you know, something all bunched up on your lap or whatever. And the same thing, I take a little tip of this paint and I'm going to blend it away from the yellow because I just want a little bit darker shade. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my flower center and I'm just going to add a little tint for a shadow in the center. And the leaves, because we did the leaves, just there's a, a tiny bit of green is I'm actually just going to go back into this green that I used the first time because when you water your paint down it does lighten although it does maintain the pigments. So I had it wet, blot, blot. Then I'm going to take just a tiny bit because I don't want a lot so I'm just going to take just the tiniest little bit amount of the green and I'm just going to blend it in. Then I'm going to come down here to my thing and I'm just going to add a little bit of shading. So this will be darker now because it's stronger strength. There! So there you have it. These are the first two steps that I would normally do and you just need these simple little brushes and the nice thing about these little ones is that you can just pity pat it. If there's a little bit of moisture you just pity pat it to soft and to clean it just take a dry piece of paper towel and just kind of swirl it on your drier part. Don't do it wet because if you wet then it just makes a mess on your piece. So I hope this answers a little bit of your questions with the brushes that I use. Thanks! Happy painting!